Beaufort County Community College published the book Life on the Pamlico, which preserves the oral histories of North Carolina in paperback form from 1981 until 2002, when budget restraints forced them to cease publications. In 2010, the community college, along with department colleagues and students, brought Life on the Pamlico back, this time online. Well, we're here from the Beaufort Community College group here. Uh, interesting subject you guys have been working on here. Brian, let's start with you. Uh, talk about the program, what it was like beforehand, and then what you've gotten to now. Sure. Uh, Life on the Pamlico started in 1981 at the college, and it was published for 21 years in a small format, soft cover publication. And the students would interview interesting people from the area and record their memories. And then it went away for about six years uh, due to budget constraints with publishing it. Then one spring, uh, Penny Sermons, our director of library services at the college, and I got together and we wanted to bring it back, but we weren't sure how to do it. Kept talking, kept talking, and then James Casey came into the conversation, and he has the technology ideas to make it an online format now, so it's accessible to everybody, no publication costs and we changed the format from a question and answer to a biogra biographical narratives, stories, with photographs and documents he'll talk more about. But uh, yeah, James, t let's talk about the, what the real difference has been from the Q&A versus now the narrative. Well, as when Brian had taken over the project, um, <clears throat> he had started using, um, posting online, uh, had simply the articles, you know, the, the students would actually put a few pictures in themselves but they were all individual articles and it really didn't have the the presentation effect that you know I thought thought it deserved because you know it wasn't getting the wide distribution so we talked got together and talked about collecting them together and giving it sort of an aesthetic format um, such that it would be something we could publicize more widely and make it more appealing to a wider audience um, the publication cost obviously you know pushed us toward the online distribution but you know the more we started thinking about it that it, it seems much more appealing simply because it, we can make it accessible to so many more people that way and then the real the real stories here <laughs> is not just the uh, the teacher side of things it's the students that have, have been part of this Camille you're part of this yes uh, you get to, to write about a family member here and talk about the experience of who you wrote about and some of the experience of just kind of learning your history. Right? Um, I wrote about my great great aunt Carrie. Um, she's my great grandfather's um, big sister. Um, I enjoyed working with her. Um, it was a good chance for us to bond. We had never really bonded that much until really after the interview and so I truly enjoyed meeting her and hearing what she had to say. Um, her being her age, she's 103. She'll be 103 um, in April, but she has a very sharp mind and she, she knows her stuff. One of the things, Brian, we talked about is, you know, it's unusual for someone, you know, like myself here in the Triangle area. You know, I can't date my family back here in the Triangle area. Right. You know, they are from the Triad, right. so I could look at it that way, but right. not everybody is able to keep their history local. And you have kind of a, a unique ability to have that in the Beaufort community college area. We do because a lot of folks, uh, most of the folks that live in Beaufort County are from Beaufort County. We have some uh, transplants from up north, but most of them are still uh, are, have been there all their lives. So the students can, uh, while the people are still around to remember the stories, they can uh, record all the memories and some funny things and some poignant things mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and uh, for generations to come. And the students in the class, like Camille, end up with not just a grade, but a tangible product for their family, the community, and anybody that wants to research life in Beaufort County back in the day. Camille, was there anything that you found that's overly surprising when you were talking to your great great aunt? Um, not really. Um, just the amount of stuff that she knew. Um, I found out um something. Um, my, I'm sorry, I found out my great 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 grandfather. He was um, born in Africa and he was transported over to the USA. Um, I don't know his slave name, but his um, real name is Caesar Augustus Godley. And um, I don't have a death certificate of him because the census of it didn't start till 1915. Um, and back on Aunt Carrie, there's no birth certificate for her either. So, um, but we have her um, younger brothers and sisters certificate, just not hers. But it was nice knowing that information because that's something that I never knew. And James, what about you? Is there any surprising 
information you've gotten out of the stories that have come in? Well, my, my, <clears throat> my focus has primarily been on the technical end of it, doing the, the editing and the layout and that sort of thing. But one of the things that we tried to accomplish, um, this was a new experience for Brian, we, we had to work out embedding metadata into the, into the publication <laughs> such that we could make it searchable. Um, you know, for folks doing genealogical research and, and that sort of thing. So that, that was a, a new learning experience for me. Um, but uh, I think it's, it, it's been valuable in that, you know, anyone from across the country can, can do searches on these folks' names, the places, and, you know, and, and download our publication. Just the history alone that you're dealing with, though, uh, and, you know, you deal with the digital side and the technical side, but trying to get some of these old photos to, you know, to, to still look at. Uh, so some of that was a challenge, you know, because obviously we didn't always have original photos and, and we had to do a lot of work to kind of reconstruct some things and uh, repair some damaged ones um, and, and to try to fit it all into an aesthetic hole so that it all sort of worked together. So that was a challenge. Brian, what about you? Is there some stories that you can think of that have kind of stood out on this? As sure. As uh, I'd like to mention one thing if I can that James in his, in his uh, forward in this issue, he talks about how uh, how ironic it is that the technology that's allowing us to do all this is so unfamiliar to the folks being written about. It's allowing us to preserve it. And that was a great forward, by the way. Uh, learned a lot of things. Uh, most of the students like Camille learn how life was back then is not like it is now. And they talk to these people, their, their relatives, and farming families, commercial fishing families, sun up to sun down, no electricity, no plumbing. The pony that they brought into the kitchen and the dirt floor that died that winter. Uh, a lot of little anecdotes, and their memories come back so clearly. And, uh, and, these, and they like to be interviewed. They have, a lot of these folks don't get asked questions by young people these days. They're all so busy. <coughs> but like she said, the bonding and they learn so much more about their family. And it's, uh, it's just a real quality uh, experience, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun. We had fun yeah, doing it. I love it. They help each other with editing, and we all have a class that's group discussions on photographs, and James helps them on where to place them and helps make the photographs look as good as he can. So it's a Who's yeah. being helped more here, the students or the people who are being able to, to express their history that they, they're in, being interviewed? Who do you think is getting the most out of this. Um, you want that one? Um, ma maybe the student, but also the person being interviewed. Um, as said, the old people, so say, um, they think us young folks, they don't really care much about what happened back then, but when we start asking them questions, they get really excited and they want to tell us everything. And I said, <laughs> they love the attention. My Carrie, she enjoyed the attention. So, I had fun with her, as said, and she just enjoyed herself. She acted like, um, like she was being interviewed, you know, by you. <laughs> One of the things that they uh, that we do in this class uh, is different than the, than the previous publication. Is they do a series of interviews, as you know, it's difficult to keep people focused sometimes. So she'll set it up. Well, let's talk about what the church meant to you this Sunday, and next Sunday, how about your entertainment, uh, your relationships, and maybe education the next time keep them fo kind of focused and manageable. Because they do like to talk. Yes, they love to talk. And talk and talk and talk, like most of us do. Well, for people who want to read up about this, where, where can they find this publication online? On Beaufort Community College's website, beaufortccc.edu. Uh, the opening page is a link, an icon on the left-hand side. They can click on that with the cover of the magazine. And then inside, James has set it up where they can download this issue, the previous issue, and then they have archived digitally all the older issues for all those years so they can access it and uh, read it as they wish and print up what they like to print up so it's accessible to everybody. Well Brian, Camille and James, thank you so much for sharing this wonderful project you're, you've been working on and re, uh, re-brought back into the uh, students lives. Thank you so much for Thanks being for here. Thanks for having us here. Thank you. Appreciate it. And that's our show for tonight. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening everyone.